Let's talk about the difference between a gallstone and a kidney stone. And how the heck are stones getting inside your body? These are all questions we're gonna answer. Let's start with the kidney stones. The most common type of kidney stone is the calcium oxalate stone. 80% of all kidney stones are this right here. And what's happening is your urine is becoming super concentrated and the oxalates are forming with the calcium. You get high oxalates from certain foods, keto-friendly foods, spinach, almonds, too much black tea, beets, and especially the beet tops, which have the most potassium of any plant, and chocolate, and there's many others as well, but these are very, very high in oxalates. One of the best ways to prevent a calcium oxalate kidney stone, realizing that it's a super saturation phenomenon, is to consume enough fluid to keep it from saturating. And that would be at least two and a half liters of fluid every single day. And if you added some potassium citrate to this, that would be good as well. Because in order for a calcium oxalate stone to develop, you would need to be also low in citrates. Okay, so if you consume more citrates, you can actually prevent this from forming as well. And you can get citrates from lemon juice. And so consuming a good amount of lemon juice in this fluid right here would be a very smart thing. There are other types of kidney stones that are not as common. Calcium phosphate stones, struvite stones, which really relates to a urinary tract infection. This is more common in, in women. And uric acid stones, which is more common in men. And this really has to do with a weakened or damaged kidney that's not able to um, get rid of the uric acid more than anything else. It's not being caused just by consuming too much protein. There are certain proteins that can worsen the situation, but really the kidney is not releasing the uric acid properly. It's being retained. And then you have a cysteine uh, stone, and that's more of a genetic uh, issue. Now, I've done a lot of videos on kidney stones. I put some links down below, but this right here is the most important thing right there if you're prone to stones. Okay, gallstones, completely different. You have a low bile situation. Over 80% of gallstones are cholesterol stones, where the cholesterol is super saturated and it develops a stone. But usually the reason why it's super saturated is because there's not enough bile to keep it thinned. And a certain amount of your fat cell is composed of cholesterol between 25 and 50%. Several things can diminish the production of bile. You can have damage to your liver, whether your liver is fatty or there's cirrhosis or there's an infection. Also, a low-fat diet can increase the risk of eating gallstones because fat triggers the release of bile. So if you don't have enough fat in the diet, you never trigger the bile production. So you would think that consuming too much fat will cause gallstones, but that's not the reason. It's really not enough fat. And a combination of these other things right here. And then we have other situations where you can increase the risk of getting stones, having too much insulin because you're doing too many carbs, or having too much cortisol or stress, or having too much estrogen. So to decrease the risk of stones, we wanna keep this in check, keep our stress down, and keep estrogen low, and keep enough bile. You can also take purified bile salts if you're at risk of getting gallstones or if you have uh, liver damage. Taking purified bile salts is a very, very therapeutic thing. Now, 20% of the time, people develop what's called calcium stones in the gallbladder. And those are primarily related to taking calcium supplements, okay? Specifically, the ones that you would get, and I'm not going to mention any brand names, but the one that has the first ingredient, calcium carbonate. That is basically a rock. So of course, it's going from that bottle to your mouth into the gallbladder. So just make sure that your supplements are not calcium carbonate, that that's like stones. And also, I don't really recommend people even take calcium supplements, especially if you're postmenopausal and you're taking this large amount, because there's some risk factors for your heart, and it creates a lot of complications. I think you should focus on getting your calcium from the diet, but I've done a video on this topic. I'll put a link down below.